Hi, I'm Dr. Yarrow. And I'm John Lennon. And over the past year, we have been working on the next generation of the TJ intranet. Okay, so um, what you see here uh, is uh, intranet 2. This is a system that most of you uh, uh, TJ students and staff are familiar with. This is what you use for reading news posts, for uh, signing up for a period, for searching the directory, things like that. It has a lot of features. But it also has a lot of problems. You're, where, you're probably aware it can be slow, it can be finicky, the list of bugs just goes on and on. <laughs> and <laughs> frankly, it's just not very nice to look at. I mean, it's got all the stuff, but they're all put on the page, like just sort of thrown together. They don't really look like one app. And so we examined all the problems with Internet 3 and determined the best solution, which is two. Sorry, Internet 2. The best solution would just be starting from scratch. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Intranet 3. Right off the bat, you can see our gorgeous new interface. It still has all the features as before, but now all these different pieces really fit together into one cohesive, great-looking app. Um, in addition, one place we've made tremendous improvements is navigation. In Intranet 2, navigation is primarily done through intraboxes, which are these uh, panels down the left side of the page. And while these are great for seeing information and getting to parts of the site, any new user can easily just click one of these close buttons, and almost no new user knows a complicated process we have to go through to get one of them back. In Internet 3, we have dramatically simplified navigation into these simple links across the top of the page to all different modules you would need to get to. In addition, each of these has a little drop-down menu that replaces functionality that is formerly seen in interboxes. These panels are superior in some ways. For instance, they get out of your way when you don't need them. They're always accessible, and they can actually be used to display dynamic content. For instance, the events panel, you could actually have it display event information in that panel without ever leaving the page you were on. This leaves interboxes free to fulfill their original function, which is displaying additional non-vital information that the user wants to see, rather than being necess a necessary uh, component for navigation. We've also made improvements to several other parts of the internet. For instance, the login page has been redesigned to match our new visual style and provide more information. There you can see just how much longer you need to listen to us talk. <laughs> One of the biggest improvements to the interface in Internet 3 is our support for multiple screen sizes. Internet 2 was basically designed for a medium-sized screen. Internet 3, by contrast, scales anywhere from the largest screens that we have in the syslab down to a tablet or even your mobile phone. It, no matter where you are, it's, everything scales to fit and it looks great. There are many other improvements we made the, under the hood uh, that we're not going to go into now, but all, one of the great things is <coughs> all these new features are still, are still supported in all the browsers where Internet 2 works. That means it works fantastic in Google Chrome, but works all the way back to old browsers like Internet Explorer. This is made possible due to our new, more versatile backend, which Sean Long was here to talk about now. All right, so mine's not going to have as many pretty pictures. I'm sorry, it's all that's going on behind the scenes. Uh, so when I restarted this project, I decided to take a look at Internet 2 and sort of see what I could learn from the documentation that was there. This is what I found. Uh, there was nothing. There was not a <laughs> scrap of what the heck was going on behind in the servers. So I decided that right off the bat that was one of the things we needed to change in Internet 3. And we implemented a system called JSDoc for automatically generating documentation for the modules based on comments in the code. And as you can see, it's a great uh, interface for finding out information about the code really quickly and efficiently. So I'm going to talk a little about the server. Um, this could get a little complicated, but hopefully you can track with me. So when you're trying to load up a web page, you, your browser sends a request to a server, and the server is going to sort of build the page that you want back and send it to you. Because the page includes all sorts of personalized content and stuff like that, so it has to do a bit of work for you. So when, um, when Nitrite 2 was developed, they used a technology called PHP, which has been getting kind of older, and it's slower, and can sort of put a lot of drain on the server under heavy load, which causes the problems where, you know how during lunch where everyone wants to sign up for a period and it takes forever to get in, someone just breaks completely? That's what's going on there. And so we decided this is something we need to address. So we decided to adopt uh, Node.js and Nginx for our server technologies. Um, long story short, that means that we get to use JavaScript for our, um, for our programming language.
language, we can fix it a lot faster, and it solves a lot of the problems that PHP had as well. Now, there's not just the server you have to worry about, there's also the database, because there's not just the pages that needs to build, but there's all this information that has to go into that. All of your student record information, the clubs, the activities, the events, the news, it all has to be stored somewhere in a way that can be accessed quickly and efficiently. That's in the database. So we also took a new approach to the database by choosing a NoSQL database. Essentially what that is, is rather than Internet 2's database, which had all of these rich features and stuff that really weren't often used, we chose a stripped down version that's a lot faster and allows us to do what we want with higher speeds and more efficiency. Now, I use the word the asynchronous server and you. Uh, that actually has a big meaning because what it means is uh, when I go up and ask for my page from, from the server, the server is going to say, all right, I'm going to start working on that and then wait for the database to give me what I need. While it's waiting for the database, it'll move on to the next person and start doing what they can for them. Essentially, no time and resources are wasted in this model and it gets to your page faster than ever. Alright, we're going to talk about the life cycle. Um, essentially, the life cycle is everything that goes on inside from the internet from the second you tell it to start to the second it actually starts doing what you want it to do. So, so you tell it to start, initialize the server, first step, nice and easy. And then it has to connect to the database, make sure it can get the information it wants. And now it caches the modules. This is important. All functions in the internet are grouped into uh, self-sufficient groups called modules. These contain things like the user module. The user module will maintain all of your user information, help you sign in, do the basic things that would belong with the user. There's also an eat period, events, news, such like that. What happens is at the start, uh, the server will cache all of these modules and convert them into machine code from the start. What this means is rather than in Internet 2, where all of your code had to be parsed and then converted and then run, every time you made a connection, that only has to, the whole first part has to be done once, and the fast code is only run for everyone else. Uh, once that's done, we route all the web pages and the REST interface, which I'll talk about in a minute. But routing the page essentially says, all right, here are all of the pages that I can give you and the format for all of them and such like that. It gets them all ready for the requests. And finally, once it's all ready to go, it says, all right, bring it on. I'm open for business. So I mentioned the REST interface. Essentially, what a REST interface is, it's a way of accessing the data inside the Internet. And sort of the mentality behind this is that the data inside the Internet is valuable as data alone. That, that data has value aside from the interface we give it in the browser. So that would mean that things like uh, iOS apps or Android apps could access this information and choose to display it how any way they want. Uh, There's just an example of some of the ways they work. It's essentially like a web page that just provides raw parsable data. So now we're going to give you a little uh, demo of what's going on so you can get back to pretty stuff. Uh, oh, well, let's uh, default screen actually. Yeah. Okay. Monitor's cutting off the edges, so we don't want you to miss a bit. Internet 3 development cycle was that we decided that, well, it's going to take a while to get these out to you guys and get all these features to you. So, parts of that have been moving back into Internet 2, such as the scalability has sort of improved in Internet 2 from based on our work in Internet 3, and the new logging page is also coming in the next couple weeks. So, right from the end of school, for what it's worth. Uh, and in addition, uh, we've also uh, heard all your comments about the 8th period interface launch early in the year and took a lot of that into account for Internet 3. That will hopefully be uh, launched in time for the last couple of periods just so we can get a feel for uh, what you think about it. Anyway, so moving on to Internet 3. Alright, so one of the big new features of Internet 3 that everyone's going to love is the groups uh, mentality essentially. The idea that I can create my club as an entity on the internet and you can find information about clubs and you can join clubs and get news from clubs and see events from clubs. All of that is handled by the groups module. For example, clubs could have uh, essentially entries in the groups module like this. And these would be all the groups that Zach would be a part of. I don't know why he'd be a part of a namaste, but that's okay, I don't judge. So uh, what you could do then is you could go into these pages and see what's going on, see who the club officers are and the sponsors and all of that. That isn't quite working right now, we don't want it to break in our demonstration, so we're just going to hold off on that one. So, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Um, another big part of it is the uh, events module up top, which is also partially broken at the moment, so that's not going to be seen either. But basically what it is, is it lets you see events based on your interests. So if I say I want to be a member of sysadmins, and I want to be a member of Namaste, uh, then I can see the events that are upcoming for the things that I am a part of which is really, really helpful, as opposed to before, where all this was handled through news, 
and you had to go search back and find that news post and figure out what this Friday meant three weeks ago. And yeah, it's just a lot smoother and a lot more helpful for the things you can do. Um, um, in addition, uh, groups does not only support uh, clubs and system groups like you're all members of the student, most of you are members of the students group. It also uh, can handle groups for classes. Uh, with Internet 3, you could actually get all of your class announcements through the internet if your teacher chooses to do so, rather, so you don't have to go off to check other sites. Um, so, so polls has also gotten a brand new UI. So um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, sections of of uh, Internet 3 have been uh, modified to uh, use a uh, use multiple panels uh, when when appropriate and when there's screen space. So again, we, we like scale, uh, scalable interfaces. So when you've got a nice big screen like that, then you have the whole screen. But as soon as there isn't room, things start disappearing until you eventually get down to the size of a mobile device. Um, preferences uh, similarly has it has this new UI. Things are now broken into sections. So things like getting back that intro box you accidentally deleted are much more straightforward. You can see right where intro boxes are. Um, in, um, uh, in addition, uh, you might have seen before uh, the, the word Ajax appear on the screen. This lets us load things like these panels without reloading the entire page the way things are done in Internet 3. This also lets us do a few other fancy things such as change themes or change interbox settings on the fly. For instance, may, maybe uh, you're angry at your temp teacher you want your temperatures in Fahrenheit. And then finally, uh, when you log in, you're no longer presented uh, with just the wall of text you see in Internet 2 because you're immediately redirected to the news page. Every, uh, a nice overview of things going on, it's presented to you here. You get events that, uh, that are either uh, of interest to you or that you are attending from the events module. Uh, the uh, eighth period module shows you what you're signed up for. You see the latest news post, you see whose birthday it is, obviously these are sorted in order of maturity. And, um, and so this shows that even though everything is still, still modular, it all gets brought together much nicer than ever before. And um, also there's one really interesting thing. Internet 2, we got some requests from some other schools at points to say, hey, your internet has some great features in it, can we use it as well? Part of the problem with that was is the internet setup for Internet 2 was so specific to TJ from every on every level that it essentially couldn't be taken anywhere else. But this is a lot of core functionality that a lot of people want. So what we've done with Internet 3 is we've split the development branches so that we have the core set of, of internet that can be run anywhere on anyone's servers to do anything they wanted. But then the TJ specific things like the period and the classes and such like that, they're all handled in the TJ branch, and we can, and so that way at TJ we get what we want, what we need, but anyone else can also use it. Okay. So we have to go to questions. I don't have any questions. <laughs> That's a very good question. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually, we're not sure what's going to happen because there's a lot of stuff in Internet too that is just important, but not you don't see on the surface a lot, and there's a lot to do. Yeah, is traffic mode going to be released when you put it into production? Oh, uh, um, show them what he's referring to. <laughs> okay. um, so, um, in, uh, for those of, you, those of you who know Chris Reffitt, you will understand this reference. So, we have, uh, just as a joke, there's this little other settings menu. One of the items is credit mode, which basically uh, sets your uh, internet on fire. Um, that may or may not make it into the final release. We're not sure. <laughs> also, and of course, every any new user to a product loves to find the first button that screws everything up, we make it simple for them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the richness of the features is just so deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. The groups, would that be something you could do as a user, or is that something like you folks would do? Uh, it actually has a whole layer of authentication systems. So what happens is the eighth period office is only going to make groups, okay? They make, make uh, clubs because they arbitrate that already. But then what happens is you can then have clubs, uh, sort of club yeah. officers, thank you, club officers who can have permissions to post from the club or something like that. And then if you're a regular user who's a member of the club or somebody wants to push something from, to that club, 
you can then send a request of a post to that club, which is all handled all within the internet, as opposed to having to go find papers and get them signed or do stuff like that. It's, it's very yeah, it's not like you can just make your own. No, you can't just do your own stuff because there's lots of legal red tape. Lots. 